Okay, for today's video, we're going to show you how to do nonlinear curve fitting in Excel. So you can imagine any crazy equation you want, and you can try and fit your data to it. Now, I think there's better software for doing this in Excel. Uh, Python, for example, is really great. Um, but if you want to do Excel because you already know how to use Excel, great. Let's show you how to do it. Okay, so for the example in this question today, or this example, we're going to take this data from this 2017 Journal of Physical Chemistry C paper by Oscar and Finke, where right in the abstract you see something that looks like a sigmoidal curve. That looks like something that material science we call an Avrami equation. So we know roughly an equation that looks kind of like this in terms of shape. So we're going to take some of these data points and we're going to try and fit it to this custom equation that we have in mind. So here I've grabbed some of this data. And if you, haven't, if you don't know how to grab data from other people's papers, I've got another video I'll put in the description of this video. It's really helpful. Okay, so we've got our X and our Y data. The Y is the peak area, the X is the time, and you can see that we've reproduced their data. Okay, So we want a Y fit. We want to come up with an equation that fits that. So the Avrami equation, doesn't matter if you have never heard of that before, the equation looks something like this. It looks something like 1 minus the exponential of negative k, a constant, times t, your time, raised to the n, another constant. Okay, So you've got two constants here, k and n. And something to know about this Avrami equation is that as it is, as, it, as it's written right here, that will only go between 0 and 1. It's going to be this sort of S-shaped curve that goes between 0 and 1. So that's not good because this S-shaped curve goes between 0 and about 12. So we're going to have to modify this. We're going to add one more constant. We're going to call it A, and we're going to multiply that whole thing by A. Okay? It still goes between 0, but now instead of 1, it's going to go up to whatever that value of A is. Okay? So our constants are as follows, a, k, and n. Okay, So using those constants, we can now come up with a best fit equation. For now, let's just put ones for these values, right? And we're going to change those later. Or actually, the solver is going to change them for us, right? Up here, we're going to say that this is equal to a, our value of a, multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus the exponential of negative k, whatever our k value is, times time, that's our x right there, raised to this n value. Okay. Now I'm going to make one quick change here. Instead of a29, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the 29, and that's going to allow me to keep on using the values in this 29th row, because we don't want those to change. We're going to, that's like our place for our constants. Okay. So now when I take this and I double click that little corner piece, it uses those same values. So even if we're down here, it's using these same three fitting constants. Okay, how do we do? Well, our fit doesn't look really anything like our data right now. So let's make a couple changes. We can guess these things to get it kind of close-ish. If you don't get it super close at the start of the solver, sometimes it won't find the correct solution. Well, for one thing, we know that A should be 12, right? It should approach, it should approach 12, not 1. So what about these? K typically is a smaller number than 1. So let's put in something like, I don't know, 0 0.005, for example. And then n is typically greater than 1. It could be 2 or 3. Let's put in 3, right? Well, all of a sudden, we're getting a little bit closer, right? If we did 4, it looks a little bit worse. If we do 2, it looks a little bit better. Okay? But it's pretty close. It's certainly going to be close enough that the solver will get the correct solution now. Okay, so how do you use the solver? You need a couple things first. First, you need to figure out what the residual is. What do we mean by residual? Well, the residual is equal to the real value of y from the data minus your fit equation, okay? So it's going to be our B2 cell minus our C2 cell, okay? So take that all the way down. We need all those residuals. And then we also do the residual squared. Any best fitting, it uses the residual squared because it wants to punish you from getting things really wrong a little bit more, so it squares the value. So go ahead and take your residual value, and you're going to square it. So this is going to be this value squared, okay? Run this all the way down. And the last thing we need, need is our sum of our squared residuals, SSR. So we're going to literally sum up this entire row of R residuals. Okay? All right. And right now it's a value of 345. We're going to try and minimize this value. We're going to try and change these constants in such a way that we minimize the summed square residual. Okay, so how do you do it? In your data tab, you should see a solver button. If you don't see a solver button over here, that means you haven't installed it yet. Easy enough. You're going to come over to here to File. You're going to go to Options. And under Options, you're going to select the Add-ins button. Under the Add-ins button, you'll now see the Solver Add-in 
click that and then click go and it will go ahead and install it in your computer. Okay, once you have done that, now in your data tab, you should see this solver button. So go ahead and select it. Now this is actually pretty easy to do. There's only three really things that we need to set here. First off is the objective. This is the thing that the solver is going to try and do something with. So let's set it as our summed of our squared residual. So what do we want it to do? We don't want it to maximize it, we want it to minimize it. Or you could say try and set try and get it as close to zero as possible. Let's just put minimum, okay? And then it says, okay, I'm gonna try and find the minimum of our sum square residual, right, by changing these variable cells, okay? So for these ones, we want these three as our variable cells, okay? Then you just hit solve. It'll do a little bit of work. It'll tell you how many iterations. It took me uh, five iterations to get this best fit solution. You can scooch this over and see how fit your data. It looks beautiful, okay? Um, so actually on this plot, I'm plotting as my best fit, I did this ahead of time, the x value and the y fit, and that's why you're seeing that here, the y fit there, okay? And it fits it pretty great. So this orange line is now best fit to our data, some custom equation, and these would be the constants in this equation. There's a, k, and n, a, k, and n, and t is just our x value, our time. And that's how you do nonlinear curve fitting Excel using the solver.